Hello, my name is Gabby Davidson with Core Planning, and today I'm talking with Jacob. So Jacob, did you just want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, my name is Jacob George. I live in Bella Vista, Arkansas. Um, we've been here about uh, three years um, with my wife and my two dogs. And um, I started with Core um, about a year ago um, as an advisor, and uh, it's been it's been great so far. <laughs> and so you're also a, um, a personal trainer, right? As well. I am. I am. Um, something that I, I do on the side and uh, I love it. And um, there's actually a lot of uh, overlap between fitness and finance. Um, so it's, it's kind of fun to see all the similarities um, between them. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I think, uh, for instance, um, everybody has the best solution, right? Everybody has the best financial product that they want to sell you. And, uh, you know, the, uh, there's all these sorts of market predictions everywhere, extreme predictions of crashes coming Buy my product, protect yourself. Yeah. And, there's so uh, much information. You just don't know. Exactly. Like that. And uh, a lot of misinformation. And that's the same way with, with fitness is that, you know, you see everywhere people saying, Hey, I took xyz supplement and i've lost 25 pounds already you got to try this thing and um so i just feel like there's a lot of similarity in just the misinformation that's out there um concerning fitness and concerning finance and so kind of helping people um sort through it um can be really beneficial yeah and do you think like being a financial advisor has helped you become a better personal trainer and vice versa i think so um i think it is um, taught me to be um, more empathetic um, mm -hmm. because not everybody cares about, um, you know, the finance industry in the same way that I do. And uh, sometimes it's hard for me to, to remember that, hey, not everybody is uh, into all that stuff. And so as I've been able to grow and, and realize that um, not everybody likes what I like and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's to be expected. And yeah. so um, I think they kind of help out each other a lot because um, our health and our financial health is something that everybody has to stay on top of. Um, and it's, it's, you know, crucial to living um, a productive and fulfilling life. Yeah. And a lot of times when someone doesn't know how to start that, like start a fitness journey or start investing, they need a, someone to help them. So I think that's another. Exactly. That's that's exactly well. right. So how long have you been doing both of those at the same time? Um, I've been training about two years okay. um, and I have been with core, you know, just the past year. Mm -hmm. So um, what made you want to go into that industry, financial planning industry? Um, let's see. I knew I wanted to have a direct impact on people's lives. Um, some jobs I had in the past, I feel like I can do a great job. I can do a, a poor job, and it's not really going to directly impact somebody's well-being. Mm -hmm. um, but with both of these fields, fitness and finance, finance, um, as I've been seeing lately, can have a tremendous impact on somebody's life. And yeah. uh, you know, they can it can help them reach their goals. It can help them um, feel confident that they're on track. And uh, as far as um, the finances go and the peace of mind goes for some people, you can really have a impact on somebody's personal life. Yeah. You hit a lot of major parts of people's lives, like their health and then also their financial freedom. So that's really cool. And what drew you to core? Um, I think it was that I wanted to have that impact and, uh, the role I was in at the time, I, I felt like, um, kind of like what I was, what I was telling you it, uh, I can, I can do a great job. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, everybody's going home at 5 PM, no matter what, doesn't really matter. Um, but when I'm having a impact on people's, you know, financial life, you can help them shave years off of their, their working life. Um, could they retire earlier? Could they, um, pay for, you know, vacations, whatever that they couldn't have otherwise. Um, so that's kind of my one of my missions is to help people be able to um, realize in their life something that they thought might've been just a dream. And is that what you kind of enjoyed the most about 
being at core and being an investment advisor is just that effect that you've had on people's lives. For sure, for sure. That's a huge one. Another one is just the core community itself. Um, I've had, you know, friends and family who are um, very interested in, in personal finance and that's been, that's been great. But to have people who are actually in the industry um, who can kind of share um, what they've gone through, um, what, to, what to watch out for, people who have that long-term experience has been huge. And yeah. uh, that community is just extremely valuable. Oh yeah, I learn a lot just by like being in our group chats and being on group calls with everyone. Like it's right. really very helpful. So what else have you done to further your education with um, financial advising um, besides your peers and learning from clients and everything? Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I'm shocked at how many financial resources are out there. I would never have realized it otherwise. Um, but there are several excellent podcasts um, that I listen to. A lot of the guys listen to uh, Kitsis, Kitsis and Carl, and yeah. uh, they're, they're great. Um, I like uh, Roger Whitney a lot, the retirement answer man. If you've heard of him, he's pretty excellent. And uh, so I, I kind of shifted my, um, my media listening away from music and to kind mm -hmm. of fill in more of that space with, um, you know, current financial uh, information. How do you weed out some of the sources that might not be as good? Might have yeah. Misinformation. Right. Um, a lot of them, you can kind of tell if there's an underlying principle of um, uh, salesmanship or, or just um, an extreme one way or the other. You can kind of see the ones who are, who are more reliable if they take a, a moderate approach. Uh, yeah. They embrace the uncertainty of the market and their solutions are not to um, prevent anything bad from ever happening to you. The solutions are to accept change and be ready to embrace it and yeah. um, deal with it as, as things come up. So you can kind of tell in the way that people are presenting the information um, if they have some sort of um, incentive for what they're trying to show you um, or something like that. Yeah, if they seem like they're trying to get something out of it. Yeah. I don't want to listen to that one. <laughs> Um, so is there anything that you've been hearing that you've been excited about for the future of the industry? Um, I think as more and more RIAs like us, um, registered investment advisor firms are, are kind of coming forward and um, offering advice and services separate from um, the, sale of a, the sale of a product. I think that's really important and really exciting. Um, to kind of see a, a bigger and bigger um, space for that um, in the market, um, as opposed to, you know, just kind of being um, dominated by uh, larger broker dealers um, that people feel like it's the only solution. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of excited to, to see, um, you know, that the mainstream advisory services flow more towards RIAs. I think that's a, a really exciting, and it's been happening for years, but it seems like it just becomes more and more um, prevalent. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a big shift there, I think. And is there anything like specific to find or investment advising that you've been like drawn towards recently? Like I know you've been working a lot with like retirement planning, things like that. Yeah, um, I think what, what gets me the most is helping people discover um, their purpose. Uh, what I don't want to happen is plan for somebody's retirement, they retire, and then they sit around thinking, what, what do I do now? Yeah. And uh, that's something that I want to uh, avoid at all costs. So I think helping somebody really find their um, kind of their purpose and, and meaning. And, um, and it could be in work that they do. It could be in a hobby. It could be in anything, volunteering, um, but just helping somebody feel like they're doing what they were meant to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, a huge one for me. Yeah, it's definitely easier to focus on finding that purpose when you're not worried about saving when you have some. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, is there any advice that you have for anyone who's wanting to become an advisor or anyone who's thinking about investing? Sure. Um, I think anybody who is interested in stepping into the industry, um, I would say if, if it's something that you want to, if, if you want to have impact on people's lives and that you want to be um, very invested and very involved in somebody else's 
um, well-being and helping them along both personally and financially, I think is an excellent opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I think it's I, I think it's something that um, would bring me fulfillment for for many years. I for the first time I'm not I'm not looking uh, at my retirement date. I'm thinking this could probably be a job that that you work well into retirement and you maybe phase out of eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if somebody's interested in having that sort of impact, this is an excellent avenue for it. Mm-hmm. That's why I kind of wanted to do it too, because it's something that you can't do forever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Your body's not going to get too tired. You know, maybe your mind will start to start <laughs> slipping. But... Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all of that. Thank you for the advice. It's all been great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for, for sitting down and talking to me today. Yeah, thanks.